Welcome everyone to GNU Presents Performance Feast. Artists in community, get ready to feed your mind and nourish your heart. We seek to expand our grassroots community of connected artists by engaging in artistry focused conversation. This series is made possible by the voters of Minnesota through a grant from the Minnesota State Arts Board, thanks to a legislative appropriation for the arts and cultural heritage fund. Tonight's special guest is Jennifer Scott. Considered the finest jazz vocal, vocal impro improviser in Canada by her peers, her fans, and by the musicians who work with her. Jennifer Scott is an important jazz voice. She has sung with such jazz greats as Gene Barrettini, Clark Terry, Tommy Banks, Paul Horn, Kenny Wheeler, just to name a few. Recent performances include Monterey Jazz Festival, performances with John Batiste, Stephen Colbert, in New York City and San Francisco, and festival dates in Redwood City, California, and Sacramento, as well as many other concerts in Oregon, Washington State, Alberta, and British Columbia. Jennifer Scott is an in-demand performer, clinician, and teacher of workshops throughout the USA and Canada. Let's give it up for Jennifer Scott. Welcome, Jennifer. It's great to see you back here. Hi, Mo. I'm so excited to be back. This is great. <laughs> I know. We were literally just getting into it the last time you we were here. A quick welcome to everybody if you're new to Performance Feast. Welcome. You are so very welcome here. We are just going to dive into a whole bunch of topics and discuss anything that pops up for us about the performances that we're about to see tonight. Um, if you want to go back and look at some of the previous episodes, it's on our YouTube channel at The Great Northern Union. And you can also find Jen's episode number three is also listed there. So you can catch up on what we're going to speed on into tonight. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, please put them in the chat. Uh, we'll have some people monitoring that so we can try and keep it keep track of that and make sure that we're giving you all of the things that you need tonight. Hopefully we'll touch on a bunch of takeaways that you can take with you and help yourself be better performers, better humans all around. Jen, welcome. I am so excited. Thanks for having me back and, uh, and a great big hey to everybody who I, I saw before and uh, just welcome from all over the world, I think, right? Yeah, yes. yeah, pretty much. <laughs> there, might be a few Van there might be a few Vancouver's in there tonight because I told a few people about it. So hopefully yes outstanding you know it's it's the good thing about what we're doing right now is like you can be anywhere anytime anybody it doesn't matter this is probably one of the most exclusive uh, times of our lives where you just have to tune in and turn up the volume <laughs> i love it i love it that's uh, it's like the literally the silver lining of the pandemic pandemic for sure it totally is i mean we're reaching people that uh like you know we probably wouldn't be sitting here doing this tonight if it wasn't for this opportunity to um create new opportunities to reach out with people through performance yeah and great to reconnect with my friend mo yay <laughs> right yeah it's been some time for those of you who are new to this uh jen and i've known each other for many years we've we sung a few tunes together over the, in the past. Um, I want everybody to know who Jennifer Scott is. And not only is she all of the things that were listed in her bio, but she is a relentless student. Uh, what I know about Jen Scott, she is a relentless student of art. She's a relentless creative, always stretching herself, always pushing herself, always finding new ways to be ex expressive and, and just be a better human being through music. And she shares what she knows so generously. Like, there's always something I'm teaching here. I'm doing a workshop here. I'm working with these students here. Uh, it's it's just such an amazing thing to give back uh, the music that you're so good at doing. I mean, quite easily, Jen, you could just be out there only gigging, but uh, you you also choose to to give back to your community, and that's just such um, an incredible thing. That's a huge part of who I am, you know, and uh, I've often said I wouldn't want to be a performer without being a, a teacher and a student for that matter. Uh, those things just, you know, that they're part of, of, of who I am. Yeah. Uh, does, doesn't it make you a better performer? Uh, you know, Without when you're question. working with that humility of being in the learning together with other people? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. The minute you think, hey, there, I've got it all. You know, it's like game over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, you mm -hmm. got to keep your feet on the ground. Uh, I want to introduce uh, the uh, the universe to another side of Jen Scott. So, uh, folks, this is uh, I'm going to share with you now a performance of Jen. 
doing a, a song that many of you are going to be very familiar with. Maybe not this way, but you're going to love this. Uh, please enjoy. Your cheating heart will make you weep. You'll cry and cry, and you'll try to sleep. But sleep won't come the whole night through. Your cheating heart will tell on you. When tears fall down Like falling rain You'll toss around And you'll call, you'll call my name You'll walk the floor The way I do Your cheating heart Will tell on you one more because everyone gets to hear the amazing miles black play piano <laughs> yeah i know miles black oh man he's i know so that 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 just the lush chords before you even begin it's like yeah it's like all the notes are there and, it was crazy. <laughs> so and you know what's funny i i just started singing it and and then we ended up um i went what key are we in he went g flat <laughs> So all you people that know keys out there are going to go, holy whoa, you know. It's all like, the flats. <laughs> he, he just kind of went, key she in? Oh, okay, he's in G flat. There you it's go. It's the black ones. <laughs> so I just, he said, just start singing and I'll, I'll play for you, you know. <laughs> That's outstanding. Now, Jen, um, let's just talk about this for a second. Um, uh, in in just us, our brief discussions, as we were saying, what do we want to talk about? How do yeah. we want to launch yeah. off of last time that we were together? Right. And a few things that we talked about were uh, the things that go into being able to improvise, a few of those things. But let's talk, first of all, about phrasing and nuance and texture uh, over top of rhythmic choices, uh, diminuendos, crescendos, overheld open vowels. I mean, there are so many artistic choices that you mm -hmm. made in this particular piece that were so inspired mm -hmm. the last time you hit that your cheat and you, you really hang on to that tight e cheat and heart and you soften it so delicately on that heart releasing the word heart it's just like oh you can feel the heartbreak happening between those two differences do you want to speak a little bit about some of your artistic choices and how that speaks to the deeper narrative under the lyric 
I love that. Well, I mean, you know, it, it, it's interesting because the choices that I make vocally are are almost always in the moment. And as somebody who's mostly a jazz singer, um, I have to come at it from an authentic place of, of emotional connection and commitment. And the good the good news is that I've also done some work uh, as a technical singer, so that there's there's certain shades that are available to me. And I was talking about this to a student today, and and she loves singing breathy, and I went breathy is good. Let's add some more colors to your vocal palette. So there's a connection between being in the moment and understanding that you have to be authentic with your emotions and then having a certain palette of, of colors that are available to you. Mm. And, so, and so there's that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's just take that one step further. So um, one person's like, I guess it's all about timing then too, because you can use a breathy quality on something that is unexpected and it will have a dynamic effect in one way. Like one emotion isn't one texture. It doesn't equate that way. Do you want right. to speak to that a little? Well, it, I think that it's interesting because I mean, I mean, a lot of people know me as a jazz singer. And so um, it's like when I'm creating a sound and I'm expressing myself, it's like, I don't even know how much I'm actually thinking about it, if you know what I mean. Exactly. It seems, it seems, it's almost like it's a subconscious choice. And I think that's what I'm, that's kind of what I'm saying. That's the deeper dive into that. Now, yeah. you know, it's, it's also interesting too, because um, oftentimes you'll be in a situation where you're singing and you have to blend with somebody or you have to speak the language of whoever else is playing with you. In this case, it was Miles playing incredibly lush chords on the piano. So I felt like I had to... I had to express and allow the ornamentation not to be just for the sake of ornamentation, but because it's it's going to complement whatever it is that he's doing on the piano. And so yeah. all these choices, and it's, I know a lot of people think, well, that's hard. You know, I have to have, you know, different vocal colors. I have to have uh, rhythmic choices. I have to have timing choices. Um, there was a moment there where it felt like we went into time, you know, and then, yeah. and then at the end we kind of fell out of it. It's like, those are choices, right? Um, and it's like, uh, there have been times when I've had to be very mindful about that. Yeah. And, but usually that's in practice. It's like you do the mindful practice so that when you get into the performance, you can be unconscious. This it's is like, exactly, you know, this is exactly true. And, mm -hmm. and that, that's when you just like have the memories or the feelings or like, what does a cheating heart feel like? I don't know. I'm just thinking about this time that happened to me and my voice expresses an experience that I've had. That's right. Because I've taken care of those practical, technical details somewhere else so that I have the tools to show up. And, and you know, the other thing I think, too, is that um, a lot of people say, well, I've never been heartbroken. And I'm like, I guarantee you have. <laughs> My <laughs> you first <know>? hamster. <laughs> right? Exactly. The goldfish down the toilet is a heartbreak, you know. It's like, yeah. I mean, there's all kinds of, 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 of things. But there's also that element of... Um, of you showing an emotion and it doesn't even really matter what it is. It can be, I'm presenting an emotion and you're reading an emotion as a result because emotion reads as emotion and what, whatever it is that's, um, that's authentic to you is going to be authentic to whoever's listening. And you've just now handed over the responsibility of, of how they respond to the person who's listening. So you've created this awesome circuit between yourself and the listener. Isn't that something I, 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 you know what, folks, we have not rehearsed this portion of our conversation, but this is exactly for the people who know me, this is exactly what I talk about as well. Almost mm -hmm. every time I coach, hey. um, it, it's exactly the same thing, that responsibility, creating that space for the other person to have that permission to fall into whatever their experience is that you have no control over. Mm -hmm. You can only bring you to it and hope that it's been enough for them to ignite their own memories and their own I experience. Call, I call it emotional superimposition because I would never <laughs> presume to feel whatever, whoever the listeners or whatever the listener is feeling. It's like somebody's like, oh, you, you sounded so angry in that piece. And I'm like, I was actually really happy. But that's that's okay they're in that mood that's what they got from it and i'm happy right right yeah, yeah. um I, I i really love how you also uh, at the very beginning of that piece if we can just reflect on your cheating heart again uh there was a, a little a little twang here and th here and there that where you were really giving that nod to the genre and mm -hmm. uh and then you let us feel safe in that and then you extended past that and i think that's also another really important thing about interpretation is giving enough uh, tangible bite-sized bits at the beginning so that you can draw that listener with you. They're, they're with you on the journey instead of being imposed on by you. 
Oh, I remember singing that for a country singer, and uh, it was after we had done this this video, and I, and I, it was not yet part of my repertoire when I recorded it there with Miles. Um, although I've always known the, the the tune, and I'm a huge Hank Williams fan, so there's there's that too. Um, but it's interesting. I remember singing it for another country singer, and and uh, and and she she said to me, she goes, normally I would really hate it when someone does that to those tunes. <laughs> Right, <laughs> meaning presents in a different way, and she says, "But you know, I can tell that that, that you that you've been heart heartbroken, <laughs> you know." And I, that was a real that was a real that was probably one of the nicest compliments I ever got. So uh, yeah, I mean, you can. It's like you got to be authentic to to convince people. Like you have to feel you got to feel some something that you're radiating out from you from yourself. Uh, yeah, you absolutely do. And and I was listening to everything you said. I apologize. My mouse died. And so I just had to go and get my cord and backup mouse because it was like, I can't control any of the controls here. Without this. <laughs> any of my gear could die at any moment. So I, I know. I know. And I, I thought I had charged everything up. Uh, anyway, but that is so true. You know, um, giving giving some nuggets to the listener, especially during improvisation, so that there are like little uh, islands in the stream, as it were. Um, I feel that way about about um, scat singing too, you know, because I, I do a lot of it. It's like when I, I don't feel that the story ends when I start doing like a like a, a scat solo or a right. vocal. I don't. It, it doesn't. The story continues, and that's where a lot of I think vocalists um, and instrumentalists fail in jazz is that they. It's like here's me singing the song, here's me improvising, and now I'm going to sing the song again. It's, I'm like, there's the end of the song. Okay, I'm I done. would dare say that people do that with their entire <laughs> repertoire as well like this song is for this thing these songs are for other things and, and especially you know in the barbershop world and we've got a lot of mm -hmm. people that are in competitive singing that are tuning into us not just in barbershop but out, out of barbershop as well mm -hmm. a lot of competitors competitive singers in the classical world in in the more pop based um, competitive singing uh, venues they tend to this is my competition ability and right. these are the other songs that i sing and mm -hmm. instead of that musician rising to make everything you know be an exquisite and an elegant opportunity for their self-expression yeah big time totally uh, we're cool. we're gonna move into something uh that is also um a pick of yours that also is uh genre out of genre we're gonna go into uh uh um, Dale Ann Bradley. Do you, do you want to uh, introduce this? Well, I mean, Dale, we go I mean, Dale Ann Bradley is a great um, uh, bluegrass singer, and she's here with her, her duet partner, whose name just flew out of my head, sorry. And they're singing a Grateful Dead tune. There you go. <laughs> go figure. I know, you know, it's it's everywhere. We, we, and can, she's, do it. we can do anything she's, and anything. Oh, I love her singing. Anyways, yeah, just please. Yeah, she's amazing. Here we go, everybody. Please enjoy. If my words did glow with the gold of sunshine and my tunes were played. The heart unstrung, would you hear my voice come through the music? Would you hold it near as if it were your own? It's a hand me down. The thoughts are broken, perhaps. They're better left unsung. I don't know. Don't really care. Let there be songs to fill the air. Rippling still. If your cup be empty, 
If your cup is full, may it be again, let it be known. There is a phantom that was not made by the hands of man. There is a road. Between the dawn and the dark of night And if you go, no one may follow That path is for your steps alone It's interesting. She's wearing a very similar shirt to the one I was wearing in Cheat and Heart. So if the next performer <laughs> is wearing the same shirt, we'll know something strange is afoot. But yes. <laughs> right? Anyway. Oh, yeah. How well, unfettered he, from Eric's voice. Oh, yeah. And just so, so, um, what's the word? Just simple and beautiful, you know? Clean. But precise, right? Just so clean, like you say incredibly precise like all the melisma on, the, on those open vowels they're just so oh, oh, oh. does that ooh, 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 that little thing that she does is just like right I mean, i've worked on that stuff and it's hard you know it's not right? easy yeah no mm -hmm. it is not i mean i've worked on that stuff too and i was just having a conversation with my partner this morning about you know the the um the the benefits of learning how to outline chords so we had a question in the chat that um uh, that was specifically about how have you built that palette um you know uh that you can do things in the moment but let's start really quite simply um mm -hmm. uh, like improvising 101 learning to outline chords do you want to talk a little bit about the importance of being able to address the entire chord not just the melody that sits on top of it do you want it in context to ripple or just in general um well, maybe in context to how about we go into some Jasmea Horn next? Okay. All right. So, <laughs> so well, it's interesting. I mean, when you hear her sing the melody to the next tune, you'll you'll be like, how does that note even fit? Um, because Jimmy Rolls wrote a tune where the where he, he it's like he does this harmonic transference and he does it right in the melody over the chords. So there's a really weird thing going on there. And Can you explain that to that some of our folks what that means? Yeah. So in, so instead of me, if I if I play like an F major seven, I so I might take when I harmonize. I'm not just gonna go ba 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 ba. I might go ba 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 do do da do do fa. So if I take those notes, and I go if I can start on the seventh, I go do ba do ba ba da do da do do da da do. I'm, I'm enclosing every single note of that chord with either a whole tone or a half tone. 
So and and so the sound it goes bo 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 and so it sounds re kind of outside the chord, but once you've done it a whole bunch, then it just it feels very very not it feels kind of juicy actually. Personally, I love the dissonance of harmonic transference. It's like uh, one of my favorite things ever in the world. Yeah. And that was a great explanation of that. But in order to do that, I think some of the people that might yeah. be singing organized music, um, even though we listen to chords and we sing in the chord, we're busy paying mm -hmm. to our own melodies. So uh, tuning and being able to be responsive to other people in the chord and being able to be responsive to other people uh, that are that are on stage with you also right. means you have to have the ears for what's happening at all times in the chord so that you can play around with that improvisation. Yeah, so say if I'm taking a melody, if I'm going, ba 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 da da da, I'm going to stay on the same chord for a second. So if I go, ba 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 ba, and so what I've done is I've, I've tuned my harmony note to follow what the ba 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 da da, because I know the ba ba, I'm trying to go down below it. So I can go down underneath it for you know it's either a sixth or a third or those are the kind of things that we can we can tune readily, but there's also like I say, it's like you you're reacting to that melody la la da 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 da, which some of you might hear as part of the melody of the next tune, but you hear um, all the the possible notes that can be hit and can be. Uh, phonated around that that little melody and I'm just taking a little piece so that we can all kind of do it I hope you guys are trying this at home and so yeah, <laughs> and if I do and then if do it. <laughs> and what happens is you start to, if like you'll notice like even a ripple all of a sudden a third harmony comes in even though there's only two singers there ha 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 but so, so I go um, da, 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 da. and then you've got all kinds of options right and yeah. so as you sing along with those notes, da -da 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 -da, you can be uh, tuning, but also feeling kind of the symmetry of it, right? So having those choices available to you um, is, is understanding how that, what's, what is made up of that chord. Those four notes, the scale that goes over those four notes. Whoops. There we are. Yeah, so I go la da do da do da do dum da 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 dum, um, and I can go um, up like da 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 So I've just gone up the scale and I've added more and more because I've got those four notes in my chord. Now you think to yourself, well, that's a lot of work. Well, you can break it down like that. You can take a little chunk of it. You can take it as far as you want. You can take just the scale or just the chord tones. Exactly, exactly. And you know, I this is something that just as a musician, regardless of what kind of music that you sing, is so important to do, especially in acapella music, so that you can be responsive to the rest of the chord around you. And it's something that I, I don't think a lot of acapella singers actually mm -hmm. spend enough time doing. Uh, they rely, you know, a lot of people rely very heavily on instrumentation to fill in that sense. But if you have that sense in your head, you have a better sense, I would say, of where you think you can go next, how you can resolve next, how you can be responsive to the other elements that are playing. If somebody hits that note, you can skip to another yeah. another dimension uh, within within those chord tones or outside of those extensions, even. You have to trust your own humanity too. And I know this sounds like a strange thing to say, but I mean, I've had singers study with me and say, I can't find any harmony parts. And I'll be at a campfire with them at one of the camps I teach at, and we'll be singing Beatles tunes and they're harmonizing. You're right. And I'm like, and I'll just turn to them and go, oh yeah, yes, that was listen that. to what you're doing. That's all it is, right? So we all have this inherent ability to do it. I, I agree. I think people overthink it sometimes and mm -hmm. sometimes they just don't know that they have the creativity to explore a little bit. You know, there are no, you can't break music. <laughs> I like that. I'm going to quote you on that one. You I can't break it. music. <laughs> no, you can't break it. It's it true. wants you to, it wants yes. you to try. Yes. To break it. I know. I know. 
Yeah. It is the one unbreakable. And, um, and in some ways we want to, we want to break it for ourselves too, because we're, we're, we feel a little scared or a little nervous about doing something that, that, that sucks. But one of my mantras is never, ever be afraid to suck out loud ever. Right. Ever. That's great, Jen. Got to do it. You got to do it. It's the only way to find your way out of the woods, mm -hmm. you know? So we're yes. going to move into, um, uh, Jasmia Horn. Uh, singing the peacocks and we're going to come in actually this is a, a larger piece but for the sake of time we've shortened it down so we're we're coming in hot on a, a beautiful sax solo uh, and then we're gonna you're gonna hear jazz mayhorn uh, finish it out here we go <laughs> that a little bit i mean that was the uh the the, the wdr i guess you say it in english right the westdeutschen rundfunksband uh big yes yeah. yeah man carolina strassmeyer eh? oh my gosh what a great that, player that solo was yeah heavenly yeah my, my a good friend of mine erwin van who was on that session too uh he said he, he i remember him telling me he says she's 
probably one of the finest saxophone players. I mean, you're here, we're talking that about That you've saxophone. never heard of, maybe. That you've never heard of. Exactly. Exactly what he said. Texture. Yeah. And like oh. the changes to this tune are interesting, right? Because they're just basically a series of minor two fives, right? Right. And then just like a, like, so you got da 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 so there's those outside notes I was talking about. They're, they're really delicious to sing when you when you kind of understand where they're coming from. And that's that transference I'm talking about, right? Right. Exactly. And the cascade, the thing is, they're they're almost they are intuitive. Oh yeah. Once you do them Absolutely. a bunch, it's just it's intuitive. You're you're well, I play bass. My hands just fall there. Your voice just falls there. Um, it, it does become absolutely intuitive. What I loved about this performance of hers, though, how she really took on the timbre of the band yeah. around her. Absolutely right. Yeah. It's like, and, and again, the, the, the setting for it was so, so intensely, like, uh, it was a moody and... And then, but she, and even though she, because she's kind of a, a very sort of atmospheric kind of gal yeah. um, when she sings anyways. So that's a really, really cool thing. Um, however, like she's also very precise about the, the pitches that she's singing. And, and that's the beauty of this piece is, is that you really do need to be, yes. Yeah, those little those little fifths that you're going down the And it's funny, I was telling you I I love and this is has not always been the case for her, but she has a little burr in her voice, like a little and uh, it came from being sick for about a year. And uh, and so when she came out of it, that was the remainder. I don't know if it's still in there or not. But uh, it's, but I kind of like it. <laughs> yeah, you know, like Django Reinhardt, you know, like yeah. playing with two fingers in Vance Gypsy yeah. jazz. Yeah, sorry about those three fingers, but you sound right. great. Yeah, <laughs> you know, right. exactly. Yeah, uh, that th those are some really great explanations that I think are really going to help our our friends uh, start to cool. get their mind around, you know, what's outside of of what's on the page. Yeah, uh, and I think that those are some really important things. I want to. Um, uh, I want to move on to something. I've got a little surprise for you. It's a bit of a launch from something that you texted me yesterday and said, "Hey, check this out." And I'm like, "Oh, I, I know some of these people. I'm yeah. gonna, I'm gonna do you one and send this back to you. Uh, send your <laughs> people. Uh, this is, uh, this is pretty spectacular. Uh, Tiffany's singing. For those of you who will know who I'm talking about right away, uh, singing the lead on this. This is just beautiful. And Jen, uh, this is one of those like." Uh, reaction video moments. <laughs> I think you're oh, gonna. Okay, I can. Okay, I'll get my reaction. Go. Go.
like what Tyler just said. Madness. <laughs> Absolutely. Right? Isn't that beautiful? That's uh, Tiffany Coburn, for those of you who are wondering, uh, from Voctive. She sings in Voctive. She's got a huge history. She's also a barbershopper from uh, Tampa area, from uh, down in Florida. Uh, what a voice, huh? Mm. Incredible. Yeah. Okay. It, um, taking that much liberty in organized singing and... Uh, and having that, what I love about watching her in the studio is if you see her perform this live, it's exactly the same. She just embodies that message and really that's that effect her voice. You know, it's interesting and, and oftentimes you see a lot of activity in people's bodies when they're singing. And she does have, I mean, she's not, she's not, um, not moving, if you know what I mean. She's not completely still. But see, can you see how she's planted? Yes. Do you know what I mean? Like she's rooted. It's not superfluous at all. Oh yeah, everything is with purpose. So any of that, I mean, you probably notice I move my hands a lot and so does Mo. And uh, and singers just kind of do that and you guys all know that. But it's very interesting how she is just so grounded and you have to be. If you're gonna, if you're gonna, you call them hangers, right? When they hold yeah, the note yeah, and then the people yeah. do, you know, resolve all the harmonies underneath them. And to be able to hang for that long with that much power for it, you've got to have absolute connection to your support uh and all the the all the vocal apparatus that you need to make that happen yeah That's it's it. it's uh it's kind of stunning actually but there is a lot that goes into being able to have the the facility and the um uh the flexibility yeah. you know we talked about you know some of getting your ears wrapped around things letting the coordination of your voice do this but really staying in your body and trust trusting yourself as an instrument yeah, absolutely. You know, it's a, there's something that we've seen for the singers so far and really different body types, mm. but they've all had that, that beautiful carriage in the rib cage, you know, that, and that unapologetic, like even Dale Ann Bradley with her hands a little behind her back, which is not my preferred stance, but still, I mean, you look at it, they're all very comfortable in their own skin mm. and able yeah. to just kind of loosen up the belly and allow the support to come and just uh, I'm a huge I'm, I'm a real breathing uh policeman or policewoman I should say you know <laughs> just, right? like, I see that and I'm like ah oh, you know that's right like, so good <laughs> right so um, good. okay so we're gonna uh you you answered back from the last time we were together I gave I gave a rap oh. <laughs> so um we're gonna go to one of your suggestions for the night here uh as your answer to my Dean Martin <laughs> <laughs> You're, you're bringing in the real goods, the real, the real, uh, the real person in the Rat Pack that if you ask me without the Rat Pack, without this person, there would, there would have been none of the others. Uh, he made them in so many ways. Are we ready to jump in? Oh, yes. Let's do it. I hate that we only have 15 minutes left, but let's oh, go. No. Okay, let's I go. Know. I represent sort of the, the, the New York scene with, with Broadway, I guess, because that's where I'm currently involved in Golden Boy. So I would like, thank you. I would like to sing a song from a Broadway show, if I may. Not my show, uh, but a show that was written by my very good friend, Mr. Anthony Newley. Uh, it's called Roar of the Grease Paint and the Smell of the Crowd. And this is his hit song from that show with your kind permission. Who can I turn to when nobody needs me? My heart wants to know, and so I must go where destiny leads me with no star to guide me. Darkness will hide me And maybe tomorrow I'll find what I'm after I'll throw off my sorrow 
Baked steel of borrow My share of laughter With you I could learn to With you on a new day But who can I turn to if After I'll throw off my sorrow, beg, steal, or borrow my share of laughter. With you, I can learn to with you on a new day. But the magic that oh man <laughs> there's not a single thing that he could not have sung in my opinion he was just and and, and any time he was required to be swinging and grooving he was so yeah. he had good feel good time good pitch good tone everything you know it's just like and he would, he would just play with tone like just tone alone like he would keep it all in a really accessible, like really yeah. on purpose in uh, in your face kind of a, a way. But mm -hmm. he would always play with turning vowels and placing consonants, like waiting until it was just exactly the right time to turn to. Like yeah. even where he ends things is just so precise. Yes, I agree. And, and, and you know, it's interesting. One of my favorite recordings of all time is, is Sammy Davis live at the Coconut Grove. Mm -hmm. So if you ever get your hands on that, I've got, I've only got it on vinyl. I'm sure I could download it somewhere, but um, it's just, it's just one of the most exquisite recordings because he does that over and over and over again. And it's like a double LP. I think it might've been recorded over two nights, but it's just ridiculous. It's like, it just never stops. And when the, I mean, they had this Rat Pack, uh, um, auditorium tour or whatever they, and they came and sang, or stadium tour rather. And it was Sinatra. It was one of the last things that Sinatra ever did. And Dean, Dean Martin and Sammy. And like Frank was okay, you know, right? <laughs> it's, it's like Dean was hilarious, and uh, and Sammy just was. He danced, he sang. He'd already been through the throat cancer thing, but right. he sounded amazing. Just like, uh, yeah. Anyways, I remember everyone was just kind of going. So how come he's going first? You know, he should be going right. last, right? You know, <laughs> it's like wow. Yeah, somebody yeah. has put it in the uh, in the chat here. Old Man River. There's a, a very good yeah. video of him doing Old Man River. It is oh, so man. profound. I am familiar with that one. It's really oh, beautiful. Yeah, it's a great one too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not to be underestimated. I just absolutely adore Sammy Davis Jr. Uh, his story comes out in everything he sings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, and people, if you don't know his story, really um, check out his entire story. Mm -hmm. What he endured. Uh, but small he, child and yeah mm -hmm. his, his urgency to live large is in everything he sings absolutely right yeah and and to watch him dance too i know that we're not we're not talking about dancing here but he's the fantastic. complete liberty and and ease in his body when he's doing it you know and uh i mean he was incredibly athletic when he danced but it was all very just sort of i talked about you know singers being rooted to the ground he just he knew he knew he knew where gravity he knew about gravity <laughs> it's like <Right? laughs> yeah amazing right? and similarly as a singer same sort of thing yeah i, I you know actually I, I quite think that some of the performers that are my favorite performers are the most impactful performances that i see are uh people that actually have taken care of, of being somewhat in touch with who they are and that doesn't necessarily mean that they're they're a well-balanced individual you take somebody like chet baker right a completely yeah. not balanced individual but mm. his voice was an absolute representation of who he was oh totally absolutely yeah it's I interesting just, my, my husband played with him a couple of times uh, with chet 
And uh, it's interesting, we, and I was telling a student this the other day, is you, when you hear Chet Baker sing, it sounds very small, you know, on the recordings. But, and my husband said, he says, when, when we were playing, we were playing these big rooms and his voice filled the room. Right. It's like, and it, it wasn't that his voice was big. He just knew all about how to be uh, uh, authentic and intense and find, find this. He found the space with his voice. Right. And, uh, but yeah. that's the thing about authenticity. If it represents mm. who you are, it's authentic. That's the point. Yeah. And, yeah. It, and it reads. But people were, were surprised at how, how, how much strength came up, came out of him. And yeah, he was, he was kind of a messed up guy, you know, but yeah, he uh, was, yeah. I often wonder, you know, if people, and we haven't played a, uh, an example of Chet Baker, but no, I often no. wonder uh, with people like Chet Baker, if that sweetness that we hear is the thing that, that exactly he was, he had to medicate himself for with his addictions. I wish we had more time because I, I have to have a great story, but <laughs> I'll just say it involved, involved my, the guys playing ping pong. Go, and, go for uh, it. And, okay. Let me say, so the, the band that was playing with, with Chet, with, no, yeah, Chet up in Vancouver, they they um they decided they were going to go back to the the saxophone player's house and play ping pong, and he had sort of a log cabin basement. So they went down there. We were playing doubles. Renee, my husband, was on Chet's team, and he was just he loved. He was so excited to be playing ping pong with these young guys. Right? They were playing ping pong, and all of a sudden it was uh, it hit hit to their side. Chet lunged for the ball because it was his shot, and he kept going and and hit the the the, the faux log cabin wall and uh, and knocked himself out and broke his glasses and so the, all these these three young uh, under 25 jazz musicians are going oh my god we've killed chet baker and uh, so a few seconds later they're like we don't know what to do and then he kind of comes around and the first thing he said he goes hey guys did i make the shot <laughs> that's all he cared. it was so so sweet and they're like we're so worried about him and he he was like no i'm fine i'm okay you know <laughs> Anyway, that, I just think it's a great story. Did I make the shot? Yeah, like did I real? make the shot? Yes. That's Jeff funny. Baker. Yeah. Well, um, I'm just going to take this opportunity then, um, just so that people understand what we're talking about, about the sweetness of, of his voice. Let's just, uh, we'll play a small sample. We won't be able to play the entire song because we've got a, a closing treat for you, but we're just going to play you a small sample of Chet Baker. Yes. Uh so uh, please enjoy just a little bit of this small sample of Chet Baker. My funny Valentine. Sweet comic valentine You make me smile With my heart Your looks are laughable Yet you're my favorite work of art. Is your figure less than Greek? Is your mouth a little bit weak? When
And just to hear his horn, he sounds like he sings. His voice is his voice. Right, so just to stop that there. So, yeah. Jen, you want to chime in about that? Oh, just it's really interesting. And, and I, I do, all I want to tell people, and I, I don't want to belabor the point, but uh, I mean, he was seriously messed up for that performance, just so you know. Um, you can see the concern on the musicians' faces. It was absolutely real that he was able to just kind of find that moment and deliver that and those like that such musicality, <laughs> like those that, that chromatic thing, perfection. You know, mm. amazing to me. But yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, we could do a whole series just. We could. Oh, we could do a whole night on Chet Baker. Maybe you'll have to come back and we'll do that. <laughs> I know. I'm, I keep thinking. Wait a minute. We have to. We have to do this. We have to do this. this, 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 this. <laughs> and we've got a few minutes left. Um, okay. uh, so we're going to jump right straight into this. Must be seen. Uh, Nina Simone. I wish I knew how it would feel to be free uh, live at Montreux in 1976. I believe is it. Mm -hmm. That 76 clip. I think that's right. Yeah. It is the 76 clip. Uh, do you want to set us up for this? And when we finish watching this, well, as usual, my friends, we will probably go a couple of minutes over because it's just the way it is. We must watch this piece of music. Yeah. All right. So uh, do you want to set us up on this, Jen? Just one, one of my biggest influences, again, singer, piano player, which is what I do. Um, I wish I knew how it would feel to be free. Very incredibly timely. But most importantly, it's Nina Simone and just her unapologetic uh stance and how she presented her music is something we could all learn from. Uh, we absolutely need to know this, this voice and, and, and the voice of people singing this and especially Miss Nina Simone bringing us this today. Mm -hmm. So we cannot not do this. Yep. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, I'll catch you on the other side of the, of the performance. Okay. Here we go.
wish I could share all the love that's in my heart. I wish I could break all the things that bind us apart. If you could know what it means to be me, then you'd see. Cause if we ain't, we're murderous. Wish I could be like a bird in the sky. How sweet it would be. Seagull ain't got nothing on me. Free, 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 free. I'm free, and I know it. Don't wanna be a, and I show it, but I'm still free. Believe in me, it's alright. I'd sing, 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 cause I would know. That ending. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh. That's the piano version of a mic drop. Wow. <laughs> Just the best. I know. It's like, a, a, again, yeah. Holy moly. I know. I, I, um, it, it's uh, the irony and the playfulness, like, hmm. you know, in the, the, the freedom in the actual music, defying the message of the yeah. actual underlying grief that's in the I wish I knew how this mm -hmm. yet the playfulness that she had with her band at the same time like there's oh, yeah. just so many contradictions and so much irony trapped yeah. in this narrative and the responsiveness of the band amazing and you know it's interesting and they talk about this in the in the documentary on her life too which is a, a very depressing watch I don't recommend watching that and the white Amy Winehouse in the same evening which is what I did don't oh. do that <laughs> anyway it's just a tip for you but I will I will tell you it's um you know they talk about um you know and again this is just a, a supposition that uh being such an activist and having that thrust upon her and she accepted it of course but that was a it was a big burden for her you know and uh and her and it affected her mental health but she it never it never strayed her from that lane you know she knew that she had to do that and she had to be who she was and at the same time be who or be that but also be who she was i think that's what i mean well it's all about an authentic purpose and yeah. being 
Yeah, that expressive purpose, that person that needs to, you have to say, if you have an imperative to say a thing a certain way, it's going to have to be said and you will yeah. find a way to do it as an artist. You will do whatever you have to do to make yeah. sure your skills are there to be able to do it. There's a message here too, no matter what we're going through, um, you know, and here we are in a pandemic, um, but, but the, the stress of life, the, the stress of your own personal life and things happening in your own situation, you can rise above it and, and be excellent. And uh, like I say, it's just, if you're just honest with all that stuff, it'll come out of you in an incredible, in an incredible way. It most definitely will. That, yeah. that is a beautiful way to wrap this up. Jen, uh, friends, let's give a warm round of applause wherever you might be to Jennifer Scott for sharing her wisdom, talents, skills, abilities, and spirit with us tonight. Uh, it's been just a pleasure, Jen. I cannot wait until we do more of this. Me too. Take two of the Mo and Jen show. I love it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> right? I'll do it anytime. You know it. <laughs> you know it. That's so fantastic. Friends, thank you so much for being with us. We will see you next week for episode eight of Performance Feast right here, 630 Central. We'll see you then. Magic Voice, do you want to take us out? Thank you, everybody, for coming. We have a quick poll that we are going to... Uh, launch right here please stick around and fill out the five simple questions that we're going to ask um as well as uh the series is made possible by the voters of minnesota through a grant from the minnesota state arts board thanks to a legislative appropriation from the arts and cultural heritage fund uh if you'd like to follow the gnu please follow us on facebook instagram and twitter gnu sings um, thank you again to Jen and Mo for a wonderful evening. And uh, yeah, everybody have a great night. Good night, friends. Thanks again. This has been GNU Performance Feast. Artists in Community. <laughs>